Because TrueLine is an open-ended hollow form, when it is driven in the ground, a soil plug is created in the bottom. If it is deemed necessary by the engineer to remove the soil below the mud line, prior to filling the form with concrete, use the airlift to create a soil slurry and evacuate it from the true line form. The airlift comes with five parts. One, a compressed air supply line ready to connect to your air compressor. Two, an air line pipe. Three, the airlift or vacuum pipe. Four, a four foot water jet pipe to connect to your two inch minimum centrifugal trash pump. And five, a diffuser that attaches to the bottom of the water jet pipe. The diffuser at the bottom of the airlift is important because it serves to redirect the water jet flow into four horizontal quadrants and helps to clean across the entire section. This is of particular benefit in soils where the vertical water stream may tend to rat hole rather than create a slurry across the entire section. Some soils, such as loose, sandy soil, may not need the diffuser. However, shell, coarse-type soil with a lot more voids will have a greater need for the diffuser. The videos presented here show the diffuser not being used because it was a sandy soil condition. The water jet pipe is inserted into the soil plug at the bottom of the true line form to agitate it and create a pumpable slurry of approximately 30% solids. The water jet should also provide sufficient volume of water to keep the true line form full of water so that it does not run dry during the pumping process. The intake of the airlift is positioned above the water jet at an elevation where the pump can effectively move the slurry without clogging. The airlift will pump the soil slurry out of the true line form and out of the discharge pipe. It is important that the airlift parts are properly placed on the airlift and also properly placed in the soil. The following animations will show the proper placements. This shows the correct relationship between the water jet pipe and the airlift intake so that there is a slurry of high solid content exiting the discharge. The water jet with the diffuser is just below the intake and is inserted in the consolidated soil plug creating a slurry. The airlift intake is above the consolidated plug but is in the slurry where it can intake and remove the slurry. This shows the incorrect relationship that will result in little or no mixture of the soil and water slurry, so the discharge will be mostly water. Do not place the water jet above the airlift intake. Do not place the airlift intake on top of the soil plug. This shows an incorrect relationship that will result in mostly water being discharged. The water jet is in a good spot to create a slurry, but the intake is too far above the slurry. This shows an incorrect relationship that will result in mostly water being discharged as well. The water jet is too deep and the slurry being created is too far removed and isolated by a dense layer of soil. This shows what happens when the diffuser is used versus not using a diffuser. On the left, you'll see the diffuser redirects the water stream to a horizontal flow creating a more shallow slurry zone that extends across the entire section. On the right, you'll see that by using no diffuser in sun soils may tend to rat hole creating a deeper and narrow pocket of slurry with soil left in the corners. Before using the airlift, cover the lift holes on the inside of the true line form with duct tape. Next, drill two two inch holes on the land side of the form for the discharge to come out into the controlled area. After turbidity holes are created, you are ready to insert the airlift into the true line form and evacuate the soils from the forms. Here we show the discharge pipe, the water supply for the jet, and the air supply line. This shows the dirt and soil coming out of the discharge pipe into the controlled area. When the discharge coming out of the top of the form is clear, remove the airlift from the true line form. Next, measure the inside of the true line form to ensure it is to the engineered design depth. In most cases, soil is removed to some level below the end of the airlift. Once this is confirmed on site, the pump hose can be marked with tape to aid in visually monitoring the evacuation depth. Next is a short video of the process in motion. 